billion years. Beyond that is the cosmic background radiation from just 400,000 years after the Big Bang. In NASA's color-coded picture, the radiation's glow is pure green, representing a distribution of matter so uniform, its temperature varies no more than one fifty thousandth of a degree. Nothing in human experience is even close to this kind of uniformity. In fact, astronomers believe the universe should really be very different. By rights, the universe should be lumpy. If you look in this direction and you look in that direction, you should see two entirely different concentrations of matter, different temperatures, but it's extremely uniform. Therefore, we have a puzzle. The puzzle has its roots at the universe's birth in the Big Bang. If everything flew apart from the beginning, why shouldn't it be uniform? No kind of an explosion that we know about uh, leads to that kind of uniformity. If you imagine an ordinary explosion, an atomic bomb, a piece of TNT, uh, it's not really uniform at all. There's a piece of shrapnel going off there, a piece of paper going off there, an extra piece of iron going off there. Uh, it's really very non-uniform. So scientists believe the cosmic background radiation just shouldn't be as smooth a green as it is. We can find out why in an ordinary paint store. Let's consider a universe that consists of different color cans of paint. In our hypothetical paint universe, we have a can of yellow paint and a can of blue paint. And at the instant of the Big Bang in this universe, the two cans of paint start expanding apart from each other. In our hypothetical paint universe, one side of it would look yellow and the other side would look blue. But as we've learned, the cosmos looks green, whether it's the paint universe or the real thing. The two colors of paint represent the different particles in the infant universe. To end up a uniform green, like the cosmic background radiation, they had to be touching. But when scientists first calculated the speed of the Big Bang, they concluded that it blew everything apart faster than the speed of light, meaning blue and yellow were too far apart, even at the instant of creation, for any mixing to take place. Seeing a universe that's so uniformly green would be very strange. It would be like taking our can of yellow paint, pouring it out, and having it be green. Then taking the can of blue paint, pouring it out, and having it be green as well. It's impossible. This horizon problem can be solved by a theory that I've worked on called inflation, which is a twist on the Big Bang. Inflation is now the widely accepted variation that makes the Big Bang work without the limit imposed by the speed of light. Another way this could have happened is that our paint universe might have expanded only this far. The two cans of paint had enough time to mix and become uniformly green before the universe undergoes a sudden period of expansion that occurs faster than the speed of light. This would spread green paint all over the universe. If this theory is right, uh, the period of inflation is really the Big Bang that we observe. Uh, the other bang that happened before that becomes uh, really a, a little bang. It's just uh, a precursor to the real Big Bang. Even today, the universe is expanding at high velocity. Galaxies speeding away from each other so fast that they seem to violate light speed as the ultimate speed limit. The faster-than-light expansion of space sets yet another limit on what we can see from Earth, where the galaxies of the universe continue to rush away from us. The galaxies that are relatively near to us, those that you can see easily, are moving away pretty fast. And indeed, the more distant ones are moving away faster. But the ones that are really far away, in fact, are moving away faster than the speed of light. And then there are the galaxies that you will never see because they started out so far away that the light from them will never reach you because the space is expanding faster than the speed of light. Space itself, then, is the exception to the rule. It can expand faster than the speed of light. But everything inside it remains bound by Albert Einstein and his theory of relativity. Albert Einstein is the cop on the block. 
you cannot break the light barrier. We physicists can accelerate particles to 99.9999% the speed of light, but we have never, ever broken the speed limit. But we don't need to break the limit to experience the strange province of light speed. If the universe bends and stretches around the speed of light, what happens when we hit the accelerator and start to get close? For most of us, light seems simple and uncomplicated, a quality of nature by which we see the universe. Under the scrutiny of science, however, it becomes strange and bizarre. Light is such a common thing in our everyday experience, and yet we have very little understanding of it, really. It's very weird. The speed of light is something that the entire universe bends around to accommodate. We can begin to understand why the universe bends itself around light speed by joining physicist Clifford Johnson at a bicycle track, where a tennis ball will compete against a beam of light. If I throw an ordinary object like a tennis ball, I can throw it at a, at a given speed, and it'll go a certain distance. This is the path of the tennis ball as Johnson throws it while he's standing still. It lands roughly halfway down the track. Next, he'll throw the ball again, but this time from a moving bike, with different results. If I throw the tennis ball at that same speed while riding the bike, it'll go faster because it's the speed of the tennis ball plus the speed of the bike, and so it'll go further. Compare the two tosses, and the difference is clear. The ball goes faster and farther when thrown from the moving bike. It makes perfect sense. But now we put light to the same test, using the bike's headlight instead of a tennis ball. If I'm standing stationary and I switch on the headlight of the bike, that beam of light that comes out of the headlight comes out at the speed of light. No other speed but the speed of light. Suppose the beam was slow enough for us to actually see its motion down the track. We mark its position just a brief moment later. Next, Johnson switches on the headlight at riding speed, and the unexpected happens. In that same moment of time, the light travels exactly the same distance as before. Unlike for the tennis ball, you don't add the speed of the bike to the speed of the light. The speed of light remains the speed of light. The two light beams travel the same distance because light speed is constant and independent of the source's motion. It may fly against intuition, but it is a fact of nature. Every beam of light in the universe travels at the same speed in empty space, no matter how fast the star or comet or galaxy that emits it is moving. After scientists discovered this fact at the end of the 19th century, Albert Einstein did the math for the rest of us and developed his special theory of relativity with constant light speed as its center. Understanding the speed of light gave us a window into understanding the nature of space and time as we understand it now. We do not live in a rigid world where meter sticks and a clock ticking at an irregular intervals. We live in a flexible, stretchy Einstein's world, relativistic world uh, of space and time. In common experience, the universe doesn't seem very stretchy to us. 